Okay, Peter, talk us through the costing so far with the staging of the games. Usually these major events go over budget. How's it all looking at the moment? Well, it's on budget and it's on time, and that's where it should be. We obviously have a contingency fund, which is part of the budget, and uh, we operate very carefully within that. So we've got effective checks and balances, a good finance committee, a good contracts approval committee. I mean, one of our challenges, of course, is that the bid book, which was put together to win the bid, was eight, nine years ago. So, of course, it's really hard to get all those expenses exactly right, and that's why we've had to do things smarter. And that's why even in a building like this, an old Bunnings building, we've been able to make sure we get maximum out at a, at, a, at a modest price. And we've done it in terms of contracts, just doing things smarter, but we are on budget and we are on time. Total cost of the games is about two billion. We obviously will get income, there'll be all sorts of uh, amounts that will come in. So around about 1.5 billion, we think, uh, and probably a bit less, but roughly, and we would imagine that, uh, well, we've thought through where the economic benefit will be, and that'll be over two billion, it'll be between two and three. So if we get, three, which is where we'd love to be, then frankly it's double the investment. So you're thinking it's a $2 billion spend with a $3 billion return locally, is that correct? Yeah, well not all of it locally, but most of it locally. Of all the contracts we've allocated, 70%, this is Goldock contracts, 70% have gone to Gold Coast suppliers. Uh, in addition to that, 84% of all contracts have gone to Queensland companies. Now that doesn't include the work that's been done on the venues, for example, and that's local. I mean obviously the workers were here. The, the spend was local, the three, the three new facilities, the upgraded, all of that's local money and that's where most of it is. And, and also, in addition to that, you've had extensions to light rail, you've had road works done, and that is state government, there's some federal government, but largely state government and council. So realistically, you've got one of the big legacies out of this is actually going to be a better transport system for the Gold Coast. So infrastructure has been a big part of, of the whole project, is that right? Absolutely. I mean, you can't run a games without getting transport right. And that's where that's been a significant investment by the state government. And that's where you get the big budget amount when you talk about it. But obviously, if you put in, a, in an extension of, of the light rail and you, you widen and improve roads, uh, there's not an immediate financial return, but there's a huge community benefit, a huge community return. And local businesses do well out of that because they've got a better transport system. If you have a look at what the Gold Coast transport network was like, there was an over-reliance on cars, simply because the public transport system wasn't that good. Now you've got light rail, now we're increasing the number of heavy rail from Brisbane to the Gold Coast, road improvements, that terrible M1 is finally being upgraded, even though after the games in 18 months. So you can see huge benefits, and all of those will affect the economy. They'll be good for quality of life and good for business. And now there's eight months to go, obviously, roughly till the games. What can local businesses... You're trying to make me nervous. Yeah, that's right, exactly. It's going to come on you quicker than you think, isn't yeah, it? It yeah. is, it is. What do local businesses need to do to capitalise on, on this big event? What do you think they should be doing now? Two things I would think they need to do. Firstly, they need to make sure they're aware of any transport plans that will inconvenience them. Now, we've engaged with them because we don't want businesses to leave while the games are on. That happened in London. We want people to stay here. We want restaurants open. We want cab drivers. We want everybody benefiting. We want shopkeepers benefiting. So, frankly, that's the first thing. Uh, and and we, we've got an ongoing consultation process, so to minimise the inconvenience. But secondly, to have a look at their business itself and see if they can change perhaps some of the delivery hours. If you're in a business in one of the hot spots, you might think, look, I'll get the delivery guy to come in after hours to deliver so they can stay open longer and they don't have to worry about that. The other thing is to look at how you take advantage of it. There's going to be 1.5 billion people looking at this event from around the world. How do you promote yourself? The other thing is there's going to be 1.2 million tickets, so you're going to have a whole lot of people coming. How do you position your business to take advantage of that? That's one of the reasons why I've called for 24-hour trading, and I would hope we'd get some bipartisan support for that, because I would want every shop to be open as long as they possibly can, to get as many dollars as they possibly can. And the final thing is, and I know this is a bit long-winded, but the final thing is this, think strategically. Uh, one of the things we've done with the uh, Gold Coast Tourism, for example, they've got a website for 30,000 beds while the games are on. You've got to be careful that you don't gouge people with your accommodation prices because what we want is repeat business. We want people to think very positively about the Gold Coast. And if you have a look at the census that's come out, look at who's coming here. A lot of Indian populations moving here, a lot of Indian investment. 
India could well be the biggest economy by 2050, 2060. So you've got to be smart about how you attract that investment, how do you attract those tourists. They're going to be an increasing number of tourists. So it's about thinking through your business and how you fit in with the game's opportunity. You said there's going to be 1.5 billion eyes on the Gold Coast during the games. Are there any specific uh, businesses that you can see that will benefit from that? I mean, apart from, say, travel, tourism, which are the obvious ones? Travel and tourism are the obvious ones, and we need to make sure we take a long-term view after the games, and that's why uh, Tourism Queensland is looking at a long-term promotional strategy, but it's more than that. What we try to do with our suppliers is to match them with locals. As, you, as I said, 70% of these contracts are local, so they look, need to look at how they take advantage of it. The other thing is this, if you look at the number of jobs in the Gold Coast, those that are in areas like health and education are growing rapidly, and that's why the village and the parkland around it after the Games is going to be a health and knowledge precinct. So what we need to do is to make sure that we work with our university. So businesses that have a relationship with the university, they need to think about training, skilling of their workforce, but then how do they encourage companies that are coming here as part of the games, and I'll come to that, to actually think about locating here and investing here. Because one of the things we're doing is we've got trade ministers coming, the Commonwealth Government Association is going to be here, we're going to have inbound trade delegations coming as well. So we'll advertise all this, or the government will, because we're working in partnership with the government. Trade and Investment Queensland is doing this, so it's not just export, export education, it's also bringing trade and business opportunities in from the Commonwealth. So I would urge businesses to get onto the Trade and Investment uh, website, talk to Trade and Investment Queensland, which is a government agency, to ask, how can I benefit? How can I be part of those inbound trade delegations? And just um, about your, one of your former positions, which was Trade Commissioner for Queensland, have you been able to use your contacts from that previous role in the current one now? Every contact I've got, I've used. Yeah. <laughs> Whether it's in this role or another role I, I may have had, you may be aware of. So yeah. I've used everyone possible. Because what we're trying to do is also encourage Australian businesses to be sponsors. Now, we've got about 30 plus sponsors. Most of those are Australian. Long Jeans, of course, is a, is a global supplier of, of uh, timing devices. They're Swiss. But most of them are Australian sponsors. And we're encouraging more of that because if you look at some of the, the big brands, and we will have them, some of them we've already announced, like Optus, you've got Star, for example, TAFE, you've got Griffith University, a long list of them. What we're trying to do is to get even more of those. And I spent some time doing that in Sydney yesterday. We'll be doing more of that in Melbourne, as well as Queensland companies. And you'll see a number of announcements that will be happening very shortly. So we're getting Australian companies, Australian corporate Australia to be part of the games. And out of that, I say to local suppliers, local businesses, get on board when they're here, work with them, talk to them, work with Trade Investment Queensland to see how you can partner and expand your business. Final question. Um, now, you're State Premier for 10 years and you've sworn at various times you'd never go back into politics. <laughs> now, this job surely must be one of the most political ones you've ever done, is that right? Uh, absolutely. It's a lot more political than I thought because, frankly, we're bipartisan. And what we need to do, we've got a state election coming up. Now, let me be really blunt about that. We've got to make certain that we work closely with the government, and we do. Make no doubt mistake about that, but we keep the opposition brief. John Paul Langbrook, we talk to him. We're lucky. Kate Jones is a great minister. John Paul Langbrook is good to work with. So we've got bipartisan support, but you can't take anything for granted. You have to work with both sides of politics, because what's important is that the games come first, the Gold Coast comes first, and that's what the focus is. And yes, there is a political role, but it's one where I'm totally neutral politically. We work with both sides.